this that will sit on top of here, okay, with this protruding through. Now, what happens here, on the inside of this, we've got a piece of half inch PEX, okay, cut to the right sides, and it presses down into this core, okay, and it's of course glued in place, so it starts to look like that. Now, what actually happens here, the gas comes out of the bottom of the cell, passes right through this opening here, okay, up through, and obviously would come out the top. But what we do is we have another piece here that fits, now this piece fits down over the inside of that core, okay. So now what we've got is a small tube inside of a large tube. Okay, then the next way that she goes together, this slides down over there. Of course, that'll be glued into there. Now, if you can see what we've got, we've got gas passing through the center. See my finger moving down there? Gas will pass out of the bottom of the cell, come up through the center tube, okay? Then, it, then there's a cap. Goes over here like that. It closes that down, okay? Now, so what actually has to happen is the gas comes out of here, can't go through the cap, so it goes back down the larger tube, and this is drilled, of course, after it's assembled, this is drilled at the bottom to allow the gas to come out the bottom of the cell. So what we really have is we've got, without extra connections and extra piping and tubing, we've got this, the cell and the, the bubbler all connected together in one component, okay? So this allows, of course, let's go back through that again. This on the top, okay? This goes on the top of here, okay? Held in place with this coupler, and I'll slide this together, okay, if you will. I'll slip this down on here just now for appearance sakes, okay? And now we've got the cell with the but with the the gas manifold in place. Okay. Uh, too much glare. Now this is then of course the top half of the cell. Gas is generated in the bottom. Okay, passes up through the center tube, down the outer tube, exits the the bottom of the of the gas manifold into the bubbler portion of the unit. Okay. So the next thing that goes on is this. And, and you got to know, this is not glass. This is Schedule 40 PVC, okay? So you can see it's nice and thick, okay? See how nice and thick it is? It's probably pretty close to a quarter inch thick, and it's PVC. It's good for 180 degrees. It's good, and it slips right down on here, okay, as you can see, okay? Then, so now you're beginning to see what the thing looks like as it takes shape. Okay, let's see if we can get just a little more elevation here on the camera so that we can see what we're doing here. Okay, now, as you can see, we've got this. We've chosen these particular fittings over a regular pipe thread fitting. Now, what we've got in the bottom of this is a rubber uh, washer. Okay, this fitting is designed with a rubber washer in the bottom. Of course, our plug fits into here, but you're frequently opening and closing this, and we found that every time you open and close a pipe fitting, you got to wrap uh, Teflon tape around it, you got to try and seal it, you got a leakage problem. This doesn't have that problem. Whenever this tightens down, when this tightens down against that, as you can see, that rubber bushing in the bottom, I don't know if it's visible or not, but you have to trust me, there's a, a rubber washer down in the bottom of this that this plug tightens against. Okay, so then we put that together and there's a hole drilled right in here, okay, which is our fill point for the cell. Now this is only used on initial fill up because what we do is we fill the cell, we tip it over, work all the air out of it, okay. Uh, you can use a lot of different electrolytes to fill it. I prefer to use sodium hydroxide. It, it's lye. It's a little little bit dangerous, but it sure is a much more efficient electrolyte. Now, 
we've, we can use baking soda. The thing will work with vinegar. But I find most of those things kind of muddy up the water and, and uh, make a lot of, of mess, and they have to be cleaned out pretty regularly. We process ourselves before we ship them. Every one of our, our uh, cores is treated through a conditioning process that takes about 24 hours. And when they're done, they're pretty clean. We don't have too much of a problem. They'll run for months and months without having to be clean, maybe even you know indefinitely without having to be clean, depending on how hard you run it and how often you run it in different applications. But anyway, this is our, our initial fill point for the, the electrolyte into the cell. Okay. Now, we also have a second one of those that goes together, same way, okay, insert into there, okay, same rubber seal, okay, now this one goes into the top, okay, now that's very convenient, again it's got the rubber seal and the plug, okay, what that is is the only place you have to add water to the cell after that is into the top. Okay. The way this thing works is you initially fill the cell. Okay. Burp as much air as you possibly can out of the cell. Okay. And, and with your electrolyte in the bottom portion. And then you fill the bubbler up to the, to the just about to the line here at the top. Okay. And what happens is the cell runs. Okay. It heats up. The water expands. You're generating a lot of bubbles. Those bubbles cause the volume of the electrolyte and water solution in the bottom to expand. Okay. Now, when you shut it off and let the cell cool down, what actually happens is that volume contracts. Okay. When it contracts, it will pull water from the the bubbler. This is actually the replenishing system as well. It actually will pull water up through the bubbler and siphon it right back in there and top this off so that it keeps the the cell portion full. Okay. Now, with the cell portion full, we don't have any concern about gas building up in the bottom or any any risk of it exploding down in the bottom. Okay. And also, what happens then is that is this replenishes the water that's used up. Uh, being converted into hydrogen and oxygen that we're actually using, okay, as that happens and we draw that off, if we replace it with water from the top, okay, now the electrolyte doesn't come out of the cell, so you don't have to add electrolyte between fill-ups, okay, you, the water is all you really need to add, so all we say is you add distilled water to the top and it will continue to replenish the cell, so we have a second application of the of the tubing here that allows you to add water to the top of the cell and you can see when you need to add it just by looking at the at the clear tubing at the top. All, all you ever have to do is add water to the top. Okay? Then about the only other remaining component would be the actual gas out connection. It goes threads into the top. Okay? See? That that's the gas out connection. So it's just a, a quarter inch pipe. And we have a special process that we've we uh, come up with for threading that into the plastic that works real well too. Uh, these types of materials aren't the easiest things to re-thread, but we found out a, a way to do it by using heat and a, and a special tool, and we make a, a very nice permanent thread in the top of this cylinder. But and that's that is our hydrostick 